Hypochlorhydria. What is it and how to get rid of it? Let me ask you three important questions. Do you get sick whenever you eat meat? Do you suffer from heartburn or reflux frequently? Do you belch, burp, pass gas, or get bloated every time you eat? I'm Barbara and welcome to Bear Pantry Talk. If you answered yes to any of those questions, then perhaps you are suffering from hypochlorhydria, which is just a fancy word for saying low acid in the stomach. Now this feels like a good spot right here for me to go on ahead and put my disclaimer. You guys know I always put this up because I always want you to know that I'm not in the medical field. I'm not here to diagnose any illness or to offer any cure. This is informational only, okay? And also, if you think that you're suffering from low acid in the stomach, you want to go see your doctor right away because they can administer a test to prove it, okay? And the test is called the Heidelberg capsule test. It's a small device that they let you swallow and then they follow it in your stomach and see how much acid you have, all right? So you always want to get the diagnosis first from the doctor before you start treating. So this video is for informational purposes only and it's only to tell you guys what to do if you've been diagnosed with this. So let's start off first of all by discussing what modern media and the drug marketing campaigns does to us. They lead us to believe that when we have acid reflux disease or heartburn, it's because we have an abundance of acid in the stomach. Now, for those of you that watch my show, you probably already know that I have a video up our, um, at the site where I discuss acid reflux disease and what causes it and so on. And you guys know that I subscribe to the belief that it's not an overabundance of acid in the stomach that causes us to have GERD. It's due to the fact that we don't chew our food uh, well. And then when we swallow, we damage our esophagus and our LES, which is the lower esophageal sphincter. And then that's left partially open because it's damaged. Then the acid splashes back up and gets into the esophagus where it doesn't belong. Now, when I had acid reflux disease and I visited the doctor, he prescribed antacids and proton pump inhibitors for me. And I asked him one time when I went, what is a proton pump inhibitor? And so he says, well, in your stomach, you have these proton pumps that pump the acid and stuff like that. And this medication is to inhibit them because they're overproducing the acid. And so my question that I posed to him at the time was, if God put these pumps in me, why would I want to turn them off or inhibit them? Don't you think I'm doing more damage to myself? And he didn't have a response. So I came home and did some research. And that's when I found out that the really raw honey was the thing that I needed to cure my acid reflux disease and to also... Um, make sure that I chew my food well so I don't have any further damage. This brings me to what causes the um, low acid in the stomach. It's overuse of antacids and proton pump inhibitors. Okay, so that's the number one cause. Let me tell you some other causes. Eating too much too quickly. Stress. Excessive alcohol drinking. H. pylori infection, which is a really serious infection that you want to see your doctor about right away if you have that, okay? Or you suspect that you have that. Hiatal hernia and zinc deficiency. So those are all the other causes of the low acid. So we've already covered what causes it. So now let's get back to what we, to why the, why the acid is so important. So the acid in our stomachs are so important because it helps um, neutralize harmful microorganisms that are contaminated in food. It acts as a trigger for the other crucial players in digestion like pancreatic juices, hormones, bile, etc. It activates extremely powerful digestive enzymes that break down protein structures so our body can use them in the most basic building block form, amino acids. Now you may wonder why the acid can stay in the stomach and not cause any damage, but it damages the esophagus, right? We already told you the lining of the esophagus is very thin and it's not made to harbor the acid, but our stomachs, on the other hand, ha is lined with an alkaline mucus that protects it. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of people talk about an alkaline diet and an acidic diet. I don't wanna get off into that right here, okay? But I just wanted to tell you the importance of the acid in the stomach. So now let's move on. The, the important thing I want you to remember is that low stomach acid is often the starting place for a whole host of other digestive problems, all right? So let's go over some of the symptoms of low stomach acid. Extreme fullness after meals. I mean, you can eat like a peanut and you're gonna feel like you went to the buffet restaurant. That's a sign right there, right? Belching, and belching is different than burping. Burping is a little, a little pass of the gas. Belch is a, like that. And then heartburn, gas or flatulence after meals, indigestion, 
vitamin B12 deficiency, and the, the only way you can figure that out is go see your doctor to see if you're deficient of that, all right? Um, aging due to malabsorption. I mean, you're going to look older than you actually are if you're not digesting your food well. Food allergies and food sensitivities. Anemia, constipation, diarrhea, skin problems, weak nails, and the most ugliest one that I hate is tasting the food hours after you've eaten it, okay? So that means the food is still sitting in your stomach. It didn't get dumped into the small intestines, and it's still sitting in your stomach, and it's becoming rotten and and just rancid and just ugly and and that's what makes you feel so horrible okay so now after telling you all this horrid stuff what it is what causes it what the symptoms are let's get into quickly the remedies so the first remedy you need an alkaline diet packed with vegetables and you can google that to find out what the best alkaline diet is and try to follow it as rigidly as you can okay you need to make your meals smaller so just get like a salad plate and put the stuff on it and don't pile it high like that because some people when they can't go this way they go that way just put enough eat and just know that you can eat again in the next hour or so okay you need to omit fried foods fatty foods coffee caffeine sugar white flour artificial sweeteners processed food yes people everything that makes you happy and gives you great joy you're gonna have to get rid of that say bye bye okay <laughs> I suggest that you remove the things one at a time, all right? So just don't make yourself so upset and sad by removing everything one day. Remove them one at a time. See if you remove something and you feel that much better, all right? Then start keeping a food journal and then write down whatever makes you feel worse, whatever makes you feel better, and then that way you can know what to add back in and when. Because when you start adding back the, some of the foods in, because you can't stay off of fried foods for the rest of your life. But you want to kind of stay off of it for the most part. You know what I mean? So if you add back in fried, fried foods and you get really terribly ill, then that might be the motivating force for you not to add back in fried foods again, all right? So if you have low stomach acid, you might find it beneficial to do the following, okay? Drink four ounces of fresh juiced cabbage juice every day. This is where a good blender would come in handy. Um, soak your meats in acidic medium like lemon or lime juice or vinegar. I mean, you guys know that I'm Belizean, right? And I think most of the Caribbean countries, they teach us to wash our meats with these type of things. They never said soak it, but to wash your meats with it. And now I know why. I mean, I always just did it because I was taught to do it. I didn't. I never knew why. So now I know why, right? Eat whole foods and not processed food. I said that already. Use spices to stimulate the stomach acid. So you want to eat some spicy food. You don't, you, you don't, you don't want to go with bland foods if you're having a low acid problem, all right? Drink ginger tea. Eat dandelion greens with meals in soups or as greens to increase production of HCL, and that's hydrochloric acid. That's the acid that the stomach needs. Always eat good fats whenever you eat protein, okay? So if you eat a piece of steak, you're gonna to wanna to eat something good like avocado with it because it makes the process work a little bit better. Protein stimulates the stomach acid production and protein and fats together stimulate gall the gallbladder to dump the bile into the small intestine and you want that to happen, all right? Good fats are also needed by the liver in order to produce bile, okay? Now, you want to chew your foods well. We're going back to what causes the acid reflux because when you have low um, acid in the stomach, it also gives you the symptoms of heartburn. That's why I started off with those first three important questions. So you want to go back to chewing your food well so because you know chewing stimulates digestion, digestive enzymes in the mouth. Try to eat three to four hours before bedtime. I go to bed like around 10 or 11 and I never eat anything, not even a peanut. I never eat anything past five in the evening. I've always done so. And um, I, I don't see any reason why I need to eat late. You know, I can't see going to dinner at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. It just doesn't work for me. Don't lie down right after eating. I see a lot of people do that. I don't know how they digest their foods that way. Don't drink ice water with meals. It inhibits production of stomach acid. I'm telling you guys up front, don't drink anything during your meals. Drink after the meal. Wait for about 20 minutes after the meal and then drink. Never drink and eat. My dad taught me that ever since I was little because he was into sports. He was a cyclist. And so he was always getting trained and eating the right foods and stuff like that. And he taught us that a long time ago. And we were strict with that with our children when we were raising them because we know we wanted them to have good, healthy digestion. Um, you also want to avoid snacking in between meals, okay? If you are doubling over with pain, always take that seriously and go in and see the doctor. If you're suffering from bloating constantly, you want to go in and see the doctor because if you get a diagnosis early, you can do all these things to reverse whatever you're going through, okay? I always want to see you guys in good health. I want to remain in good health. 
And so that's why I'm bringing you these series, you know, to teach you how to reverse certain health issues. I want to thank all of you that have stuck with this channel because, you know, this channel is primarily about reviews. But because I can't find things to review, to review some of the times, or maybe the things are too expensive for me to purchase to review, I have to do other things in order to bring a video consistently every week to you guys. And I'm so glad that you stuck with me and that you're enjoying the series that I'm bringing, okay? Now, if you want to see, uh, see me review something that I have probably missed, please put it in the comments below and I'll go look for it and see if I can afford it and you know do that in one of the upcoming videos. And if you're liking the series that I'm doing with these different ailments that are plaguing us today, you know, all over the world, not just in America, but all over the world, just let me know, okay? And I'll come back with more videos like this. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please share it for me. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And um, as usual, take care of yourself and I'll see you next video. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing and please check out my other two channels right here on YouTube, the cooking show called The Bear Pantry Show and my vlog channel Babs Bear Talk.